The rise in popularity of plant-based milks has forced the dairy industry to start playing dirty. Let's see how. Firstly, the title, Decoding the Dairy Case. It immediately implies that there's something cryptic, something deceptive going on, and that they're going to expose it. But it also suggests that what they're going to say in the video won't be mere opinion, it'll be the objective conclusions arrived at after the decoding process. There's something for everyone in the dairy case at the grocery store. Okay, so for the first time we realize they're talking about a physical case, one where products are kept, and they're already doing ideological work as they're calling it the dairy case, i.e. the case where dairy should be. More on that later. Okay, so here they're positioning themselves as a sympathetic parent who understands how difficult it is to make such decisions. And of course, they're being really patronizing at the same time. I mean, talking down to the customer, suggesting they don't have the mental faculties to decide upon what kind of milk they want to buy. But maybe some people won't notice, or maybe they really are overwhelmed. And this video is offering to make the choice simple for them. I love the use of quotation marks here. With so many milks, so they're implying that not all milks are real, something which is reinforced in this next part. Again, they're hammering home the idea that not all products in the dairy case are real, that some are misrepresenting themselves, lying to the consumers by calling themselves milk. That implies the fast one is being pulled. Cow's milk often shares the dairy case with these milk alternatives. So here we see the true significance of them calling it the dairy case. Aside from naturalizing the idea that dairy should be there, they're positioning plant milks as imposters in this space, as pretenders, because they aren't dairy, yet they're in the dairy case. When of course it's not a dairy case, it's a fridge. And this fridge is symbolic of the milk market, which dairy producers have dominated for years, but are now being squeezed out of. They can't even give the stuff away. How do they stack up? Great idea, let's compare. I'll get the ball rolling. How about we compare how environmentally friendly they are? As you can see from this graph, producing the same amount of soy milk takes just a quarter of the water that cow's milk requires, half the land, and it produces less than half the CO2. So soy milk definitely wins on environmental grounds. Ooh, I know, we could compare it on ethical grounds. To produce dairy, you have to forcibly penetrate the anus and vagina of a sentient being against their will. Don't worry, I'm not gonna call it rape. Rape is something that can only happen to hairless apes, I know that. Then a couple of days after the cow gives birth, you kidnap the calf so it doesn't drink all of your milk, then plug her into a machine that sucks her dry. Repeat this cycle until she's spent, usually 20 years before the end of her natural life cycle. Then you slit her throat, and that's the end of it. Whereas with soy, you know, you, you put the seeds in the ground there, they grow, you, you harvest the... Look how cramped those soy plants... Yeah, I can't do that. Plant-based milks obviously win on ethical grounds. Let's go back to the video now, see what grounds for comparison they're using. Ah, nutrition, of course. It's all about the consumer after all, not ethics, not the planet on which they live. But no, seriously, this is an important topic, so let's see how they stack up. Okay, so we've got some ideologically charged words being used here. We're talking about naturally occurring essential nutrients, and apparently they really want you to notice the word naturally because it's in bold and it's capitalized. Double whammy. Yes, you see, they want to create a juxtaposition between naturally occurring and added nutrients. The former, being natural, are positioned as being healthy and wholesome, whereas the latter are positioned as suspect, seeing as the nutrients are added, they're additives, and there are negative connotations to that. Anyway, let's see how they stack up. So despite the number of essential nutrients added to plant milk being variable, read unreliable, that number never seems to vary beyond eight, meaning that according to this infographic, cow's milk always comes out on top in terms of nutrition. Say I've got an idea, instead of comparing real cow's milk to these variable and imaginary plant milks, let's compare their actual properties. So if I only include those nutrients for which a single glass would provide at least 10% of one's recommended daily intake, then soy milk would provide vitamin B12, vitamin B2, vitamin A, vitamin D, calcium, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, selenium, and protein, which they count as one. So that's 12 essential nutrients, far exceeding milks. Nine. 
So milk is a nutritional powerhouse, you say. Why? Because you've written out the nine nutrients you were just talking about? Anyone can do that. Look, soy milk is even more of a nutritional powerhouse. Besides which, they're just listing the number of nutrients found, not the quantities. Upon closer inspection, their claims that milk contains these nine essential nutrients become rather suspect. If we go back to chronometer, we can see that an entire glass of cow's milk only provides you with 1% of your recommended daily intake of niacin. So unless they're suggesting you drink 100 glasses a day, I think it's a bit rich to claim that it's a source of niacin. But hey, if the industry wants to include even these trace amounts, then that's fine by me, because by that logic, soy milk would actually provide 23 essential nutrients. I find this doubly amusing because if you look back at their list of the nine essential nutrients in cow's milk, you'll see that this deception is quite deliberate. I mean, if you had to guess which of these nutrients they were trying to sneak past you, which would it be? Calcium? Protein? Phosphorus? Or maybe it's the one for which they use the smallest font, put it on its side to make it difficult to read, and tuck it up in the corner. But I see you niacin, and I am not buying it. Cow's milk has eight times the protein of almond, rice, and coconut milk. Well, that certainly sounds impressive. Hey, uh, wasn't wasn't there another milk in in the mix a minute ago? You know, I'm sure there were four plant milks that we were talking about. Oh yeah, soy milk. What happened to soy milk? Why do you suddenly want, not want to talk about about soy milk? I mean, there's a glaring soy milk shaped gap in your lineup. Could it be because soy milk has just as much protein as cow's milk? Besides which, not all proteins are created equal. There's a growing body of evidence that suggests that far from being a selling point, animal protein is actually harmful to human health. Based on this study of over 130,000 people, it was found that animal protein intake was associated with higher cardiovascular mortality, whereas high plant protein intake was inversely associated with all cause and cardiovascular mortality. And so the researchers concluded that replacing animal protein of various origins with plant protein was associated with lower mortality. You know, replacing cow's milk with soy milk, for example. So yeah, you might want to keep that 7 grams of animal protein per glass to yourself. Ah, who am I kidding? It'll take decades for this to trickle into the public consciousness. Let's keep watching. Milk alternatives may include a long list of ingredients like added sugar, syrup, salt, thickeners, and stabilizers. Pro tip, a long list of ingredients could be fine so long as they're all healthy. But since that's not usually the case, just the idea of a long list of ingredients carries negative connotations. And look at the words they've decided to put in bold here. Added sugar, syrup, salts, these are unhealthy ingredients. But the word that really matters here, the one that needs to be in bold, is may. If you don't want to buy a plant-based milk with lots of ingredients, with added sugar or salt or what have you, you don't have to. The one I put on my cereal has three ingredients. Just look at this exaggeratedly long list of ingredients. But if we pause the video, maybe zoom in a little, you can see that the only reason the list are so long is because they're including all the nutrients which are in the plant milks, which is obviously a good thing. Wow, cow's milk only includes ingredients you can recognize. See, they're being very smart about this. They're not making any actual claims of their ingredients. They're not saying cow's milk only includes healthy ingredients, but they are implying it, as any unrecognizable ingredients are inherently suspect and are associated with unhealthy additives. So they're getting you to think what they want without getting in trouble for coming out and saying it. And once again, they're being incredibly patronizing, suggesting that you won't recognize most ingredients and that it's beyond you to learn what they are. Besides which, I think they've forgotten something, because as you may have noticed from Chronometer, just one glass of milk actually gives you a red flag for your intake of trans fats. Ouch. So let's add that on there. Oh, and let's not forget cholesterol. That might explain why animal protein intake is associated with higher cardiovascular mortality. And of course, insulin-like growth factor 1 which is so key to the growth of cancer cells that those with extremely low levels of IGF-1 in their blood due to a condition called GHRD are essentially immune to dying from cancer. Still, drink up. Cow's milk is one of the most nutritious and affordable foods you can steal. Well, we've just seen that it's nowhere near the most nutritious option, and as for affordable, well, if you pay taxes, you're also paying for the subsidies that allow your milk to seem cheaper on the shelf, so it's costing you more than you may think. All types of cow's milk are healthy, you know, except for cholesterol, trans fat, IGF-1, and safe to drink. 
I love that. See, the idea that cow's milk is safe is not a claim they're making of their product so much as an implication they're making about every other product. The idea that plant milks might be unsafe, that you might choke on a whole soybean perhaps. And if you don't like the taste of another creature's secretions, you can cover it up with plants like strawberries or cocoa beans. Are they joking? And what happened to that ingredients you can recognize claim? I googled a few flavored milks and I don't think they meet the criteria. Added sugar, stabilizers, thickeners, isn't this the stuff you were complaining about before? The power of this imagery is almost too obvious. I mean, the slim woman who's getting the milk, so it couldn't possibly be fattening, with her young child in the trolley, so you know she must be highly conscious about health and what's best for her family. And of course she's getting the really big cotton because you don't want to run out. Is this some standardized PR playbook which all these firms are working from? But my favorite part is the text at the top. It's not choose the milk that's best for you, it's choose the cow's milk that's best for you. <laughs> yeah, that's subtle. Actually, I think that's my second favorite part because it turns out they categorized their video as being educational. That took guts. Until next time, keep looking for the truth and when in doubt, follow the money. Oh wait, I didn't do that yet. The video was funded by the American Dairy Association Mideast, a trade association for Ohio and West Virginia dairy producers and an affiliate of the National Dairy Council. No conflicts of interest there then. Just objective facts. Good old education. As the images they post seem to deliberately mimic most people's visions of hell. It's as if the more horrifying the picture, the more they're proving to themselves and others that it must be okay.